Okay, let's talk about how to multiply polynomials. Well, these here are polynomials, but technically they are what we call binomials, okay? They are two-term polynomials. So before you take on a problem like this, you want to be familiar with how to multiply single-term uh, polynomials. Let's go and take a look at an example real quick. Something like 2x times 3x. So these right here, these are single-term polynomials. We call these monomials. So 2x times 3x, what is the answer? Hopefully all of you said, oh, that's 6x squared. If you knew that, that's excellent. Then um, after you master this, you move on to things like uh, a monomial being multiplied by a binomial. So 2x, for example, times x plus 1. Again, this is the monomial. This is the binomial. So how do we approach this? Well, we use the distributive property. So this would be 2x times x. That's going to be 2x squared. And then this 2x times that 1 is going to be plus 2x. So this is an illustration of the distributive property. And this is basically polynomial multiplication. Of course, you need to understand something about powers. So um, after you learn how to multiply using the distributive property, i.e. a monomial times a binomial or a trinomial or a larger polynomial, then you graduate on to things like this, which of course is how do we multiply a binomial times another binomial? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that there is two ways, okay? We're going to talk about those two ways. There's actually a couple other ways you can think about it, but I'm going to give you two very, very good, easy techniques that you can learn and master, and you absolutely need to know this stuff if you're in any sort of algebra course. So we're going to get to this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you're struggling in mathematics, do not give up. There is hope. All students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires great math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. If you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my Math Help program. It's much more comprehensive uh, than the things I do on YouTube. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video, but I assure you it will really help you out in your respective math courses. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a dedicated math section, things like the SAT, GED, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can definitely help you out. If you homeschool, you definitely need to look at my middle and high school courses for homeschooling. They've gotten really, really good reviews over the years. By the way, if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into how to multiply a binomial times a binomial. Again, this is kind of a special case polynomial multiplication situation. And effectively, you can look at this two ways, okay? In the most traditional way that students learn how to multiply a binomial times another binomial is using a technique called the FOIL technique. So this technique has been around forever, but effectively, it's just an acronym, and it stands for first, outer, inner, last. And I'm going to show you what that means and how uh, we apply this acronym to actually find the product of these two binomials. So if this is what you're learning in class, that's excellent. But I also want you to think of doing any sort of polynomial multiplication as some sort of version of the distributor property, okay? And I'm gonna actually highly recommend uh, you thinking about all polynomial multiplication problems in this way. But we'll take a look at both techniques. You definitely need to know the FOIL technique as it's going to be on most of your test in any sort of fundamental algebra course that you're taking. So let's go ahead and do this product real quick. And we'll use the FOIL technique as our first uh, tool here. Okay, so again, FOIL, F-O-I-L, stands for first outer, inner, last. So what does that mean in uh, practical terms? Well, let me go ahead and show you. All right, so let's take a look here at the F. That is, of course, the first. So what does that mean? Well, it means the first terms of each of these respective binomials. So if you look here, 2x and 5x are in the first um, kind of placement of each of these respective uh, binomials. Okay, so this is the first, all right? So you just... You kind of have to kind of do some rote memory if you don't really quite understand this. So we're going to multiply 2x times 5x. That'll be our first. Then after we do our first, we'll move on to our O, 
which is our outer. Okay, so what is the outer? Well, you can see it's this 2x all the way over and this negative 3 right here. The outers are the very out ones just like this. Okay, the most extreme left and right are the outers in terms of what um, the terms that we're going to multiply. Then that brings us to our next one, which is the inners. And of course, this is the inners right here. The, uh, and it's basically kind of matches the outers in terms of the general pattern, but these are the inners, the innermost. So that's one and five X. So those, that is our I, we're gonna multiply those together. And then that leaves us with our last. And our last is basically the opposite of the first. Okay, so this is the last term of this binomial and this is the last term of this binomial. So it's gonna be one times this negative three and that will be our last. So when you're using the FOA technique, just kind of, you know, you can use little arrows like this, but over time you'll just get uh, good at this. So we just basically have to do each one of these little products, okay? For example, when we do the first, we're gonna go 2x times 5x, et cetera, et cetera. So let me go ahead and show you the results of doing this. All right, so here, I'll just kind of try to squeeze it in this way. So let's take a look at our first. Our first is gonna be 2x times 5x, that is gonna be 10x squared, okay? Again, you should already know how to multiply, um, as we uh, talked about in the beginning of this video, a monomial times a monomial. Of course, this is 10x squared. So if you're confused about that, you need to do some review. But now let's move on to outer, okay? So that's the first. Now our outer terms is gonna be 2x times negative three. Make sure you get that sign in there. So 2x times a negative three is a negative 6x. Okay, that's our outer um, term. Now we'll move on to our inner uh, product. So that's gonna be one, positive one times a positive five X, which gives us a positive five X. That's the result of the inners. And then we move on to our last. So that's gonna be one times that negative three. Remember, you gotta get that um, uh, sign in there. If there's any negatives, and make sure you include those. So that's gonna be one times negative three, which of course is negative three. All right, so we're not quite done yet. Anytime you do um, uh, the FOIL technique, you need to clean up by um, adding like terms. So you can see here we have a like term of negative 6x and 5x. So when we pull this all together, we're gonna uh, always wanna write things in standard form, highest to lowest power. So this would be 10x squared, negative 6x and 5x are like terms. So negative 6x plus a 5x is a negative 1x. So you just write that as negative x. So that's our middle term here. And then lastly, we have this negative three right there. And this is our final answer. Okay, so how did you do? Did you already know how to do this? If you already know how to do this, I was just got to give you a nice little happy face and A plus and a 100% for being an awesome algebra student. But uh, let's take a look at this other way to think about this problem. And a matter of fact, I'm gonna suggest that you think of all polynomial multiplication problems this way, because what I'm gonna show you is a technique or a, a way to view this problem where this comes in handy, whether you're dealing with, let's say, uh, let's take a version here, like say 2x uh, times x plus one. So this is a monomial times a binomial. And of course, we're gonna use the distributive property, but I also want you to kind of think of the distributive property here. This is a binomial times a binomial. This is going to kind of work. And then what if we had like 2x uh, plus one times x squared minus x plus nine. So now we have a binomial times a trinomial, okay? Well, in this situation right here, the FOIL technique would not work. Matter of fact, let's make this super clear over here. And I kind of failed to do that, but I'm gonna clear this up right now. The FOIL technique only, only works with a binomial times another uh, binomial. This technique does not work with a binomial times a trinomial or a monomial times a anything else. It's strictly a binomial times a binomial. So that's the only time you use the FOIL technique. So now I'm going back over here with the distributive property. The distributive property, we typically think of, hey, well, by definition, it's a monomial times a trinomial, binomial, et cetera. But if you kind of um, think of the distributive property doing these problems, this will help you out with any polynomial uh, multiplication situation. Now, when you get into multiplying a trinomial, let me just kind of bring something up here real quick. Uh, let's say I wanted to multiply that by 
x minus 1, a binomial times a trinomial. There are basically two other ways you can kind of think of this. They're kind of formally taught as a, a vertical approach and in a horizontal uh, approach or method, a vertical method and a horizontal a method to multiply this. But again, as I teach algebra, I like to kind of simplify everything and not give you so many methods, just give you one method that you can do all these problems. And this, this is the method here. I'm going to call this the distributor property or variation of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now you can see I have it written out here, but let me explain this first. So in the distributor property, I want you to take the first term of this binomial uh, on the left. This could be a trinomial, it could be anything. Just take the first term, okay? So here, this is 2x. And now just think of this as a distributor property, okay? I.e., you're just gonna multiply this 2x times this 5x and this 2x times this negative three as if this was the problem, 2x times 5x minus three. If I gave you this problem right here, let me scoot this down, you should be like, oh, okay, I know what to do. It's gonna be this times this and this times this, and then you get your answer. Well, that's exactly right. That's the distributive property. So what you're gonna do, the way you're gonna think of this, is you're gonna take this first term, then you're gonna distribute it to these two, uh, two terms right here. Of course, you're gonna write out your answers. Now, after you're done uh, taking this 2x and multiplying by anything over here, in this case, this is a binomial, but if you had a trinomial or a longer polynomial, just do that whole thing. After you're done, you're going to scoot over to uh, the next term that you have. Okay, so I'm done with the 2x, so move over to the right and do the same thing with the one. Okay, so now with this one, I'm gonna multiply this times this and this times this. And then of course you just re uh, repeat this for as large of a polynomial that you might be dealing with. So hopefully this makes sense. And so now let's go ahead and see this in action. And here I'm gonna go, okay, 2x times 5x. So again, I'm just thinking this as a distributive property. That's 10x squared, 2x times this negative three. That's negative 6x. Now I'm done um, uh, multiplying by this 2x. So now I'm going to scoot over to this 1, okay, because I'm done multiplying everything I can by that 2x. Now 1 times 5x is a positive 5x, and 1 times this negative 3 is negative 3. You can see we end up with the same terms that we got when we used the FOIL method. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms and write my final answer in standard form, which is 10x squared minus x minus 3. Okay, so this is a much, much better way to multiply polynomials and binomials, monomials. Let's just take a look real quick. If I had x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 3, let me show you real fast how I would do this technique. I would start right here. This x, I would multiply this times this times this, okay? I would get all my terms, and then once I was done, I would move over to my next uh, term here, and I would go this times this times this, and get all my terms and collect up all the like terms and write this thing in standard form, okay? So again, try to think of the distributive property as the main way uh, in terms of multiplying all polynomials, but when it comes to special case polynomial uh, products, i.e., a binomial times a binomial, you definitely need to know and understand that FOIL method. And if this video helped you out uh, to like review the FOIL method or maybe learn it for the first time, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need additional help with polynomial multiplication or anything, everything algebra, I'm gonna recommend um, all my algebra courses would, uh, I teach this pre-algebra and algebra one, algebra two, even pre-calculus college algebra. It all depends on what level you're at and reviewing, so I would definitely start there, but I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel that goes over uh, a lot, ton of things about polynomials, so take a look at that as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.